Welcome to vCloud Director 5.5 Tutorials. My name is Rick Powell and in this video we're going to go through the process of installing CentOS 6.4 using vCloud Director 5.5. Here is the process that we're going to go through to accomplish our task. First, we're going to begin by uploading the CentOS 6.4 ISO file to vCloud Director. Next, we're going to set up our networking for our org VDC, our virtual data center. And then we'll go ahead and start the process of creating a new vApp. And during that process, we'll assign the org VDC network to this new vApp that we're creating. And then we'll create a new VM, and inside that VM, we'll install CentOS 6.4. After the installation, we'll install VMware Tools, and then we'll assign the IP address and we'll test for network connectivity. Let's go ahead and get started. Here is the default login screen for vCloud Director. I've already inserted my username and password, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the login button. Here we see the default interface for vCloud Director, and as you can see, I currently have a Windows Server v, uh, v app that I created from another tutorial. But for this tutorial, we're going to start off by uploading the CentOS 6.4 ISO file so that we can assign that to our VM when we get to that point. And we do that by coming up to the Catalog tab. And with this Catalog tab up here selected, we can see that I already have defined a catalog called ISOs. And I don't need to create another one. And so I'm going to come over to this particular tab, Media and Others, click on it. And at this point, I'm going to upload another ISO file into this location. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Upload button. And I'm going to choose to Allow. And I have an option of either specifying a URL to reference or to obtain that uh, the ISO file, or if it's on my local machine, which it is, I can select this option, Local File, click Browse, and on my desktop I have a folder called ISOs, and inside of there I have my CentOS 6.4 ISO. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, click Open, and I'm going to leave the default name, not going to put a description, but just as a quick reference, you can see that by default it's going to place this ISO file into this catalog. I'm going to go ahead and click Upload. And this process is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and we'll come back when this process is complete. Now that our ISO file has been uploaded successfully, Let's go ahead and set up our org VDC networking. And where we do that is over here on the administration tab. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to go ahead and click on my organization called All Things VMware. And then out here to the right, we have the org VDC networks. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And Currently, I don't have a network defined, so I'm going to go ahead and define the network by clicking on the plus sign, Add Network. And then I'm going to just choose the default, Create an Isolated Network. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And then I'm just going to insert uh, information about this network that I'm creating. The gateway address for this network is 10.123.110.1, the netmask 255.255.255.0, the primary DNS, I'm going to use 8.8.8.8, .8 and the secondary 8.8.4.4, .4. and then I'm going to come down here and define a range of IP addresses that I can assign to any of my VMs that are part of my organization. And I'm going to create a larger range, even though I'm only going to use one IP address. I'm going to go ahead and create a range of 10.123.110.5 through 10.123.110.250. And then I'm going to go ahead and add that range. Now we're going to give this a name. I'm going to call this outside network. 
and I'm going to go ahead and leave the description blank for now. Click Next. I'm going to review my settings. Click uh, Finish. Now that our Org VDC network has been created, I'm going to make one change that I like to make uh, to the default settings, and that is by default when you create a new Org VDC network, it also creates a DHCP server for that particular network. I like to disable that, that's just my preference. And to do that, we can just right click on it, come down to configure services, and here I can just uncheck enable DHCP and then click OK. That'll go ahead and disable the DHCP server for this particular network. Let's go ahead and move on to step three, which is creating a new vApp for the CentOS installation. And where we do that is we click on the My Cloud tab. And as you can see, up here I have the vApp selected, and it's going to show me all the vApps that I have defined. And here you can see that I have a Windows Server vApp. But in order to create a new vApp, I'm going to click on this button right here, Build New vApp. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to go ahead and assign my vApp a name. I'm just going to call this one CentOS. And if I like, I can give a description. I'm going to leave it uh, blank for now. I'm going to assign this vApp into the virtual data center, all things VMware. I'm going to not set an expiration date or a lease time for this vApp. I'm going to leave these settings alone. Go ahead and click on Next. And here, if we did have templates created, we can just click on a template and then add it down here to our vApp. But being that we're doing a brand new installation, I'm going to click here, this button, New Virtual Machine. And here it's going to prompt us for a virtual machine name. I'm going to go ahead and put in CentOS 6.4. I can specify a different computer name or host name. I'm going to go ahead and leave it uh, the default that it placed in there. I'm going to go ahead and leave the description alone as well. And here we have the option to specify what virtual hardware version we want this uh, VM to be created with. I'm going to leave the default of 10. And then we specify our operating system that we're going to install into this VM. And this is going to be a Linux install. And then we select the operating system that we're going to install. And I'm just going to scroll down till we get to CentOS. There we have it, the 64-bit. And I'm going to leave the resources down here at their default values. And I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And here you can see that I now just define my new virtual machine. Uh, I can create additional ones, but for right now I'm going to go ahead and leave it uh, just the one. We'll click on Next. Here I'm going to go ahead and leave uh, the name CentOS 6.4 alone. We can specify a different storage policy. So if I had one star storage policy called NFS, another one for iSCSI, another one for Fiber Channel, or uh, SSDs, whatever the storage policy is, I can select that. But for our particular virtual data center, we just have one storage policy defined. So I'm going to leave this the default. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And here we have the option of defining our network. And I'm going to click on this box right here so that we can see the network adapter that it's going to use to create our new VM. And by default, it's going to choose the E1000. But after the installation of uh, CentOS, we're going to go through and install the VMware tools, which installs the driver needed for the VMX Net3, which is the preferred network driver or device to use for our VM. So I'm going to go ahead and select that just so that the VM is defined up front, even though it won't be recognized with this particular device. I'm going to click out over here under the network, and because we've already defined uh, our org VDC network, uh, outside network, that's why it's listed here. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then I'm going to choose uh, Manual 
static manual, meaning I'm going to assign it an IP address, and it needs to be an IP address out of that range that I defined for my network. So I'm going to assign this one 10.123.110.65. Which happens to be a IP address that is natted to a public IP address by our firewall. I'm going to go ahead and click Next, and I'm not going to uh, define this as a fenced VAP network, so I'm going to leave the default, click Next, and then here I'm going to review my choices and settings, and then click Finish. Okay, now that our VM is created, so the next step that we need to do is we need to associate the ISO file to the CD-ROM drive so that when we boot this VM, it's going to boot off that CD-ROM device. And the way that we do that is we click uh, not on the V app, but we're going to come down and we're going to click here under CentOS, and then we're going to click here under Virtual Machines, so that we can highlight the virtual machine and not the vapp. So here with the CentOS 6.4 VM selected, right up here we have the button to insert CD slash DVD from catalog. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now it's going to bring up the catalog of ISOs. And as you can see, I have my choice of ISO files, and here's the one that I've just recently uploaded. And I'm going to go ahead and select that click insert and at that point it's going to associate the CD to the ISO file okay now that the ISO file has been associated with the CD-ROM the last two steps I just need to boot my VM and then open up the console so I can walk through the installation so I'm gonna go ahead and with my VM selected I'm gonna go ahead and click on the green power on button and then I'm going to wait until the status changes to Powered On. And as soon as it changes to Powered On, I'm going to click this icon, which will bring up the console window. Now that it's at a Powered On state, go ahead and click on this icon to bring up the console window. And now this starts the default installation of CentOS. So I'm going to go ahead and press Enter. And on this screen, uh, since we're not dealing with uh, hard media, I'm going to go ahead and choose to skip the testing. I'm going to go ahead and expand out our window so that I can see all my options. And now I'm going to go ahead and click Next to begin the installation process. And we want uh, English. I'm going to click Next. US English for my keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And Basic Storage Device. I'm going to click Next. And I'm going to go ahead and say Yes to discard any data that may be on that virtual disk. Uh, for the host, I'm just going to put in CentOS 6.4 and click Next. I'm going to leave the default time zone, New York, and click Next. I'm going to go ahead and assign a password and retype my password for root. Click Next. And I'm going to leave the default setting here of replace existing Linux systems and click Next. And I'm going to click Write Changes to Disk. And for this installation, I'm going to choose Basic Server. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and come down and click on Next. And now it's just going to go through the process of finishing the installation of CentOS 6. Now that the installation has been completed and the server has been rebooted, I'm going to go ahead and log in as root. And the last two steps are we need to install VMware Tools and then assign the IP address. So in order to install VMware Tools, I'm going to go back to vCloud Director. And with the VM that is highlighted, I'm going to right-click on the VM and then come down here and choose the option Install VMware Tools. And what that's going to do is associate the VMware Tools ISO file with the CD-ROM device inside the OS. So knowing that, I'm going to come back over to my console window, and now I'm going to mount the CD-ROM device to a mount point on my file system. So I'm going to mount 
slash dev slash cd-rom and I'm going to mount it to slash mnt and then I'm going to cd this slash mnt and let's take a look there's the VMware package so for me there's multiple ways you can do this but I'm just going to copy the VMware tools package into slash temp and then I'm going to cd to slash temp and then I'm going to extract that file in this location. Now that the files are extracted, I'm going to, let's take a look. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, because it's showing up in blue, but there is a VMware tools distro directory. So I'm going to go ahead and CD to that directory and inside here in green you can see that there is the VMware install.pl file which is what we need to execute to install VMware tools. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that and at this point I'm just going to accept all the default values and just pressing enter, 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 enter and I'm just going to continue on until the installation is complete. Now that VMware Tools is installed, I'm just going to go ahead and reboot my server just so that it starts up and it sees the VMX Net 3 device and then it has the driver, loads the driver. Now that the server is rebooted, I'm going to go ahead and log in as root. And now we need to assign the IP address information. So I'm going to go to slash etc slash sysconfig network dash scripts. And we're going to edit the file ifcfg dash e0. And here I'm going to specify on boot. I do want this to load on boot. Oops. And I want this to be static and IPA address or IP address for this machine is going to be 10.123.110.65. The net mask is 255.255.255.0 and the gateway is 10.123.110.1 and that's it the other need uh, the other change I need to make is to the resolve.conf file to put in the DNS information and we're just going to keep this simple for this demonstration and just put name server 10 oops 8.8.8.8 .8 and name server of 8.8.4.4 we'll write that out I'll do an if config just so we can see what's currently assigned we don't see the e0 defined so now I'm going to do an if up for e0 and now let's take a look at our if config. And now that we can see our IP address information is there, and let's go ahead and see if we can ping our default gateway of 10.123.110.1. That's a good sign. We're getting a response. Let's see if we can ping one of our name servers, 8.8.8.8. .8 okay, good. We're getting out to the external network. And last, let's test our name resolution by pinging like yahoo.com. And name resolution is also successful. So I'm going to go ahead and control C. Well, that completes the installation of CentOS 6.4 using vCloud Director 5.5.